Hello, everybody. I'm Darius Sivoshka from uh, Institute of Lithuanian Language in Lithuania. And I'm going to present today my topic, uh, Women's Social Status and Naming in Prussia based on the German Order and Duchy of Prussia documents of the 14th, 16th century. The object of the research is the peculiarities of uh, mention of women and their names as indicators of social status in German order historical documents. Research materials. The manuscript and a few uh, printed editions of documents of German chancellery were purposely selected for this research. It is noteworthy, noteworthy that the fact from the history of Balts are uh, described in a wide variety of historiographical sources written in Latin, German and Old Slavic. This report is limited to the manuscript documents of the late Middle Ages issued by German Order Chancellery to ensure the smooth management of the state economy. These are documents, mainly privileges for allocation of land parcels to peasants, financial documents, registers of the German Order income and expenses, etc. Those documents present unique material for the research of historical nomenclature and the context of its development, not only because of large numbers uh, of names found, but also because of reliability of their testimony. Today, the research of historical nomenclature uh, should not be limited to the discovery of unknown names and adding them to databases or dictionaries. It is crucial to analyze the context of their mention. We have to delve into sociocultural, confessional, linguistic, and other contexts of the area under investigation. Many in interesting data, curious facts, hypotheses, and um, incentives for further often Interdisciplinary research emerged from such extended investigation. My message today also illustrates this. So the aim of the research is to study the cases, um, the cases of mentions of women in 14th, 16th century, German order documents, and also those of the Duchy of Prussia, to evaluate uh, them as possible indicators of women's social status. So let's go to the overview of, of the data collected. First, the first manuscript collection of the German order documents is folio 105, which was chosen for the reason mentioned above. Uh, this is a set of privileges based on which land parcels were allocated to peasants. German order of only 105 was not analyzed in details by onomisticians until 2013, although it is particularly rich in materials important for, uh, for name studies. The folio 105 consists of two parts, the first is called uh, Marshall's uh, section, containing 300 privileges, and the second, so-called uh, the German Order Master's Register, is even more abundant with uh, a short episodic records of the granted privileges. The document of this documents of this folio uh, date from 1260 to 1402. It is noteworthy that, uh, um, uh, to mention that until 1392, women are not mentioned by their names in many documents and are uh, really, really mentioned only when identifying a man, it means naming uh, a woman's kinship with him. The example is 1373, Pimenen and Vestergelen ihrer Schwester. You see the translation and also the fragment from, from the original document. This is the only instance among all the privileges in uh, the folio 105 
that a woman is mentioned only to identify her son as one of the beneficiaries of the privilege. The son name is also not given, probably because he may have been a minor. Uh, the mother's name is uh, not mentioned, only the word Shrestha, sister, is used. Uh, Folly 105 contains uh, one more case of women's mention. Uh, this time the name is given. 1392, eine einsame Frau Gertrud. So this is a woman named Gertrud uh, with the son. She gave to the church uh, the chandelier and uh, her name was given. There are no other mentions of women in documents related to transactions or other um, uh, deeds um, legitimized properly. Uh, the second source uh, is the German Order Folio 107, which contains another set of privileges, including those issued uh, for the dwellers of Sambia, one of the largest Prussian ethnic lands. The Folio 107 is also a large collection of several hundred documents covering the 13th, 14th centuries, as well as the beginning, the very beginning of 15th century. It is also, it, it also contains uh, only a few mentions of women. First, the woman is mentioned as the wife of bitter owner, who is the recipient of the privilege along with the husband. It should uh, be noted that uh, when granting a privilege, uh, the recipient is um, uh, usually a male head of the family and uh, the descendants. Uh, so uh, example 1396, you see the example also in the slide. For die nun geben unserem getrohen Nordabs seinen rechten Erben und Nachkommlingen. So it means Nordabs and his right heirs. In the case 1373, we see Hermann Kretschmer zu Girmov seiner ehelichen Hausfrauen. So uh, you see also the translation of this of this excerpt. The rightful heirs uh, were undoubtedly the sons. However, in this case, the wife, written down as Hausfrau, housewife, is mentioned as the recipient of the privilege next to the husband. Another entry in the uh, oh, folio 107 is from 1388. And uh, um, the woman mentioned in this excerpt, uh, she is a single woman whose land uh, uh, parcel is transferred to Martin uh, to rule with her, together with her, under conditions laid down in the woman's privilege. The woman is not named even when she is the sole owner of the property. One more case um, is curious uh, um, uh, because uh, women's uh, mention in uh, the Folly 105 is, is as follows. Ibidem uh, Kina Vitwe, and then one more mention is also in the next page, Kina Vitwe mit ihrem Sohn. Without going into the details, it should be noted that in this case, uh, the woman's name should be considered uh, not a name at all. Although it is um, in work, the Altpreußischen Personennamen, the Old Prussian Personal Names, uh, by Reinhold Trautmann, the famous researcher of the Prussian Personal Names, considered Kina a personal name. According to the latest, the research of Grisil de Blechenia from 2017 in the work Altpreußische Eigennamen als Quelle der Altpreußischen Lexik, it, uh, it would be translated as all Prussian personal names as the source of Prussian lexicon, Kina is most likely considered as a Prussian appellative, which should have meant a woman, a wife then it would turn out that even in this testimony, the woman's name is not mentioned, only her social status, it is a widow. No further mentions of women were found also in the collection of the several hundred privileges uh, either. Another source is a set of financial 
accounting documents. The German Order Treasures Book, Marienburger Tressler Buch, der Jahre 1399-1409, also known as uh, Orders, uh, Orders, German Order Folio 140. It contains uh, the income and expenditure data of the German order transferred to the central office of uh, the order in Marienburg, the main headquarters of the order. Mentions of women in it are already increasing. We see 1409 mentioning one woman. The woman's name is not uh, uh, mentioning the woman, but the name is not mentioned, only her nationality, Judin which also follows from the interpretation of Kina as a palliative. So it means Yuda Kina, uh, the Jewish woman. A woman whose name is written down received four marks from the treasures, uh, treasurer of um, German order. And in 1403, uh, her name was mentioned here. The woman's name is mentioned next to the man, man's name, because she was personally granted seven marks. However, the man's data is needed to identify the woman. It means that only the man appears in other documents. Without identifying him, we cannot identify the woman, although uh, her name is also known and mentioned. 1407, we see the name of the woman, Martin. In this instance, the woman's name as well as origin is given. But let's see the the instant uh, the the instance of uh, for, um, 1408, and we see one more case. The woman is described as honorable, but the name is not indicated. Again, the data of the man at whose request the amount was paid out is uh, used for identification. Yet another source is um, uh, the folio of the German Order 89, which is full of women's namings. This is a, a register of impoverished and indebted inhabitants of Königsberg, uh, covering the period of 1477-1523. This folio, like all others, is kept in Berlin's secret archive of Prussian cultural heritage. Here are only a few of many instances of women's uh, mention recorded therein. 1488, Anna Schabers, 1485, Anna Schaltische. These are women of German origin who are named with the two-part name the first of which is a woman's name, and the second is a descriptive marker. Schabers is apparently related and derived from the name of the craft, Schaben, to shave, to scrape. Uh, whether the Schartische is probably related to, to and to derived from the German word Schulze, elder or chief. The second uh, descriptive component in both names later became a surname. One more case is 1477, Lucia de Metzger's uh, Hausfrau. It is the butcher's house, uh, housekeeper's wife. Uh, to name a woman, the husband's profession is used. Thus, it is obvious that in 15th century, the man's data is still used to identify the woman. However, uh, it is important to note uh, that more often uh, when a woman is uh, mentioned next to a man, her name is no longer ignored, although her name all of such in uh, of such cases cannot yet be posted. Around 1470-1490, most of the named debtors uh, are husbands together with their wives and only the husband's name is mentioned. 1478, Hans Scholze, cum uxore, it means Hans Scholze with his wife. 1479, Jakob Kavse mit cum uxore, it means again with his wife. Around 1493, Heinrich Kruger, cum uxore, Gertrude, Gertrude is already, uh, wife's name also mentioned. 
But just a year later, 1994, Martin Derek Kum Oxor again, the name of a uh, um, uh, wife disappears, and only the man is a uh, man's name is uh, is mentioned in the same folio. It is important to know that the um, employees of the German order chancellor liked to identify foreigners precisely by their ethnic origin. Women are also named using the ethnicity marker. Uh, for example, 1478, Grete Prefschekine, it is Prussian woman. 78, once more, Katerina Tatarkine, that means the uh, Katerina Tatar woman. Then Marta Refshekine, Russian woman, and 1481, Katerina Litavekine, it means Catherine, uh, Lithuanian woman. However, there are other options of naming a woman, 1478, Christina Iregangesche, which would be translated as the insane Christina, then Margarete Hiedenreichs and Heiden, Heidenreichs uh, Margaret, which is very possessive naming style, and also 1478, Mar Margarete Leserekina and Margarete Tidekina, same style of naming, just the names of husband is already in different, uh, uh, different uh, origin. Uh, previous ones were German, and then next ones are already Prussian. The same system is used to name the person. Um, the last source uh, is uh, exceptional. It is one. It is not from the times of German order state, but uh, the Duchy of Prussia. Uh, this is the so-called 1540 Register of Turkish Tax in Duchy of Prussia, the Türkensteuer des im Herzog zum Preußen 1540, Volume 2. The tax was collected to prepare for repelling the invasion of the Ottoman Empire. This source is used to, to check whether the situation of naming of women begins uh, to change with the establishment of the secular rule in Prussia. As far as the nature and specifics of the source allow, the situation has hardly changed, as uh, there are only few mentions of women, of women in colossal list. And you see all those mentions, uh, 1540, Katerina, then Anna, this Dargis Mr. Tochter, it means the daughter of Dargis, and so on. And now we turn to results and conclusions. Uh, the result, uh, results are split in, in, in certain sections. So first, uh, when evaluating the data in chronological order, one notices um, the inconsistent naming of women. Easily moving from the descriptive nameless mentioning of a woman to uh, the named one. Until the end of 14th century, women are hardly mentioned at all in documents of the German order chancellery. At the end of the 14th century and the beginning of 15th century, they are mentioned in men's transactions with the German order only name, only to name the relationship with the man or their marital status. Only in exceptional cases, a woman name is mentioned, like the case with Gertrude, who, who was mentioned really because she was the only person responsible for the action she took. It is noteworthy that uh, precisely in 15th century, naming a woman by name is becoming more common. An earlier inscription mentioned women's names uh, does not become a stable tradition and uh, names disappear again in later testimonies, like 403, 407, six names are mentioned, but 408, they disappear again, and only the state of the status of the of woman is mentioned in the context. In the 16th century, women's name, women's, the women's name in the German order documents become quite common, but only in the documents of a certain purpose. Women are mentioned alongside their spouses, or other men um, they were in the relationship with. Nevertheless, the names are not given. 
Secondly, women are mentioned only to identify the beneficiaries or heirs. Uh, we had that case with the Pimenen and Vistagelan, and we clearly saw that it was uh, Shvesta, the sister, was mentioned only to identify the, the uh, son who was still minor. Thirdly, a woman could only be mentioned by name in cases where she was the direct and only responsible person like Gertrude, already mentioned, who gave a chandelier to the church. But even in such and like cases, the name is not always mentioned. Apparently, in the case of uh, the woman from Sippendorf, which we had in one of the slides, um, in that case, secondary information like place of residence, the fact of having children made it possible to identify the woman without mentioning her name. Four, the phenomenon of a woman's uh, dependence on a man is obvious. 1488, we had Anna Schaveners, then Margarete Hidden, Reichs, uh, 1497, and even uh, 1540, the alte Vagers, it means uh, the old Vagers woman. Uh, when uh, the main bearer of rights, duties, and responsibilities is a man, there is no need to identify a woman. It is enough to mention her in existence. Five, the identification of women using the nationality marker, which is uh, realized, by the foreign word kine is a very important fact. Although already mentioned Prefsche kine, Tata kine, Refsche kine, Lithuania kine, Litav kine. These are not unique cases in the, in the practice of the German order chancellery when the appellatives of the colonized Prussian language are included in the usage of the officials who often uh, created hybrid coinages. In the above cases, uh, a German form of naming uh, the nationality, Prefsch, Lit Litaven, then uh, Rafsch, and so on, followed by then the, um, the uh, uh, Prussian uh, Kina, made that compound. Such tradition uh, of hybrid derivation of names is especially noticeable in the place names of the territories of Prussia, Prussian govern, uh, German order state. Let's say example would be Braxenwalde, Brax, the Prussian, Prussian personal name, plus Wald, the appellative, German appellative, uh, which meaning is the forest or the wood. And conclusions. Firstly, both during the Middle Ages and afterwards, the established social status of the woman did not allow her to have any right to property, inheritance, decision-making, etc. This is one of the main factors. They are not mentioned in the documents formalizing ownership, rights, duties, responsibilities, etc. Secondly, Another important factor, um, especially when it comes to the period when um, uh, when the mentions of women by uh, presenting their names began to appear, but hardly took hold, is the case of the German Order, order Chancellery. Uh, the Chancellery was managed by the German Order brothers who viewed the woman uh, and her role in society through the prism um, performed by Christianity. The woman and her role were also very limited in eyes of the church. The traditional tradition nurtured uh, for centuries has not changed even after the change of the state system. Third, the nature or purpose of the documents themselves plays a certain role in the mention of women in German order documents. They are mentioned in the financial registers at the very beginning of the 15th century when they donate to the order uh, or are in debt. Nevertheless, even in the 16th century and later, uh, they are directly mentioned in the privileges when it comes uh, to the granting of property, inheritance, and rights. 
And fourth, finally, it is also important that uh, the woman's origin or nationality did not have any significant uh, significance in naming her. German women, Lithuanian and Russian altogether were named in the same style. Uh, um, not, not, uh, not. We do not observe any any differences in that. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, that I'm finishing my my presentation. So many details. Thank you very much. So we we have a few minutes um, for questions, either in the chat or. Uh, directly to Darius. Okay, uh, I see Catherine Davis raising like her physical <laughs> hand. So go uh, ahead. Thank you, Darius. I, that was so well presented. It was fascinating to try to read the German from the documents, uh, and you had, of course, the translation and so on. Of course, as a as a woman, I have to say it's depressing, but then we know, <laughs> right? This is where we've come from. So. Um, are you, has anyone done a comparative study of contemporary, uh, the contemporary situation in Germany uh, in terms of the way women are named? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Because I, I didn't quite understand the, uh, the comparison of the historic and the present situation. What, what do you mean by the question in that, in that part? Well, um, I mean, you've done such a good job of, identifying the way the women were named and uh, identified <laughs> in those early documents. Is there something that would show the, the progress we've made um, by comparing contemporary? I mean, so maybe, I'm not, maybe I'm not formulating yeah. that properly, but does somebody else know what I mean? The, yes, yes, now I, 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 I think that I got you. Yeah, so, you know, presently, I simply, I'm doing totally different uh, type of research and uh, just from the materials which I collected and the documents which I have read, I have also noticed that uh, that uh, mentions of women, men, then relationship uh, of, of relatives and everything, it makes the context and that contextual uh, data, which is very important for the research of uh, of, of proper names, uh, especially for the for the personal names, and uh, this is just the first attempt to do something with the let's say women's names or something. So, uh, speaking about German names or let's say German women names and uh, connected to the current situation of the research in Germany, I could not tell you very exactly if uh, uh, there is a lot of research is done because it was just my first attempt, like I, like I mentioned. But, you know, uh, such kind of uh, researches recently are very popular. And, uh, you know, uh, so I think that Germans are doing more about their own names, that means German names. As I'm investigating the historic names, Baltic names, it is Prussian, Lithuanian historic names, uh, so I was more focusing on that and on this line. That's why this presentation was also related with that. What what the situation with the German researchers that of uh, German origin names? I could not uh, uh, go into the details and and comment more on that. Thank you. There is a question here in the chat from Anne Anderson. Is there any significance to some records being written in Latin and others most in German? Um, Olio. Uh, 89, and why are these in secret archives? Uh, thank you, very good question. Yes, of course, uh, you know, keeping in mind that uh, uh, late Middle Ages, uh, Lithuanian historic documents, all of them were written mostly in either if they are in the Eastern uh, Eastern relationships with the, with the Russia and Russian uh, uh, duchies, uh, so they were written in uh, church Slavic uh, language, and those which were written by German order, they were either in uh, dialects or, or the types of the old German language or Latin also. So that's why the main documents, historic documents from which we collect the data, they are not in Lithuanian language, but of course Latin or, or um, German, old uh, German language, which were to that time the chancellery language, languages. Yes, and then um, 
there was a second part of the question, something I just uh, lost. Uh, uh, why are this in secret archives? So ah, secret, secret, sorry, yeah, 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 secret archives. You know, that secret archive actually, it is not, uh, I wouldn't say that it's so secret that uh, nobody would be able to access it. Of course, for the purposes of uh, science of the research, any person who is doing that actually gets the access to all the data and everything, but uh, but the that cultural heritage um, uh, archive is called like this, and of course there are many diplomatic also documents which are kept also in 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 secret. But those documents, for example, which I'm dealing with, they do not need any specific uh, you know permission. But of course, all the all the persons who want to to read them, to analyze them, are registered. Have to inform the archives before. This is the order, actually, of the of the of the archive itself. Thank you. Thank you very much.